If the New York Mets want to make the playoffs this year, it's up to them to get the job done themselves. Can they handle their business in Milwaukee this weekend? I'll talk about that more on today's show. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on X at Finkelstein Ryan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. Today's episode is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, the right state can make you a fan of any city, even your baseball rivals. Book today on Booking.com, the official accommodation partner of Major League Baseball. Get the Booking.com app today. Now, if you were a Mets fan today that was looking for some rooting interest in the Thursday slate of baseball games, what exactly were you rooting for? First game to look at was the Kansas City Royals. That's the team that the Braves are going to play this weekend. Be better if they lost and had more incentive to win over the weekend to get into the playoffs. So that was the first game. I was tuned in on the Royals lost by a score of seven to four. All right, that's fine. The Twins are the one team standing in the Royals way for making the playoffs. So next thing I'm watching for Twins Marlins Marlins hundred lost team Twins got this covered, right? Well, the Twins fell behind by a score of five to nothing. They battled all the way back to tie it, sent it to extra innings. Marlins scored one run in the top of the 10th. Twins scored in the bottom of the 10th, sent it to the 11th. They put up a zero. They were right there. All you got to do is get the ghost runner in, and you are going to win that game. They did not. 12th inning, another zero. Marlins don't score in the top of the 12th. All right, all you got to do is get that run in. There was an intentional walk. There's runners at first and second. Nobody out. Just get that run in. They go to lay down a bunt. The guy bunts into a double play. Pops it up. First base makes a leaping catch. Throws it to the second base. And the runner's out. They don't score. Then, top of the 13th inning, the Marlins score three runs. Twins only score one. And they lose in horrific fashion. All of a sudden, if you look at this AL wildcard race, Mariners have been eliminated. Okay. So there's three teams left that are vying for two spots. The Orioles already clinched theirs. The Yankees beat the Orioles on Thursday to clinch the AL East and a first round bye. So, Guardians, Yankees, they're through to the ALDS. Orioles will play in the wildcard round, likely host. The Tigers, actually, funny enough, could sweep the White Sox over the weekend, which you would think is a very realistic possibility. The Tigers have won five in a row, nine of their last 10. Hottest team in baseball outside of, well, yeah, I would say outside of the Padres. But the Padres, will get to them in a minute, no longer in that classification. The Tigers could sweep this weekend. If the Orioles got swept by the Twins, all of a sudden, it would be the Tigers that host the Orioles. They have the tiebreaker. Uh, the Royals could sweep their series. They don't have the tiebreaker over the Orioles, so the best they can do is the fifth seed. So this leads back to the, the Royals. What do they have to play for? Really not much. One more win gets them into the playoffs, but also one more loss from the Twins does that as well. And I think the Royals could get swept this weekend and back themselves in. I really do. I don't think the Twins, after failing to beat the Marlins with the Orioles still having a little bit of something to play for. They got to win one game to ensure home field over the Tigers or whoever they play. I'd be shocked if the Twins run the table and the Royals got swept. So the Royals probably early. And the fact is, with the weather, with the hurricane that's still going through the state. And I, I do want to acknowledge because we've been talking about this specifically from a baseball perspective. And I was just reading the update now to see where this storm was. And it's something that I should be more sensitive to as I have lived my entire life in South Florida. So I've been through this so many times growing up and it's always such a scary situation. When one of these storms that are so unpredictable, if you're in the track, you're in the cone, you have that, that fear, the wonder, do we leave? Do we stay? What do we do? Do we bunker down? And if you do bunker down, it's, it's a scary you know, day or two until that storm finally clears through. So, I do want to acknowledge that we've been talking about this from the baseball implications. And so I haven't 
necessarily talked about how serious this is. And as I was reading the update and where the storm is, apparently there's already been three casualties. So uh, if anyone has this storm, you know, coming through the area, I hope you all remain safe. And I hope that the loss of life is limited here and everyone makes out of this okay. Um, it's definitely something that you can almost ignore or not think about when you're just worrying about baseball and this this fun you know part of life that we enjoy the game and all this stuff playoffs you get so wrapped up in it you forget about how serious a hurricane really is so hopefully you know this storm passes and and most people make it out of it okay without too much loss of property and of course loss of life um, now awkwardly transitioning back to that baseball side of it i'd be shocked if the Braves play on friday i really would because the storm it's going to be right over Atlanta, I believe like eight o'clock in the morning. It's passing through upper parts of Florida into Georgia right now as I'm recording, you know, one o'clock here. So they're going to be getting rain all the way through. Um, there's a chance that if the grounds crew works some miracles, they can play Friday. I, I think there is even a more likely chance that the Royals are going to play a double header against the Braves on Saturday. I don't even know or think the Royals are in town yet. So, I mean, if they have to try to fly in, I, I just, I don't know. I haven't seen, I, there was an update that was sent out in the morning. The Mets had made it safely to Milwaukee. I haven't seen the same thing about the Royals. And I would think they probably weren't going to fly into the storm. Probably stay in D DC tonight. So the point is, when it comes to that side of it, the Brave series, the Royals, if the Twins lose on Friday night while the Royals aren't playing, they might literally have nothing to play for. And if you look at what they were going to set up when it comes to their pitching, had these games mattered, it was going to be Brady Singer, Seth Lugo, and Cole Reagans, their top three pitchers. They might hold all of them out for the wild card round. So the Braves have the easiest series, so to speak. Now, if they have to play a doubleheader, it's hard to sweep doubleheaders. But the point is, you cannot count on the Braves to get eliminated by the Royals. If it comes down to it, the Mets are going to have to be the team that knocks the Braves out of this thing. Now, moving past that, right? Moving past the storm, the, the AL wildcard race, there was still another game that was important today. That If you were a Mets fan, you could have tuned into and said, all right, if this happens, that's good for the Mets. And that was Padres-Dodgers. The San Diego Padres had a tragic number for the NL West of two games. Dodgers had a magic number of two. Essentially, if the Dodgers won on Thursday, they would clinch the NL West, and they did that. So now you would say, all right, there's nothing left for the Padres to play for. That's not entirely true because they still are going to want to host that wild card series. And if the Diamondbacks ran the table on them over the weekend, swept that series, they would match them at 91 wins. And those two teams are even on their season series. So whoever wins this series will have the season series tiebreaker. Now, if the Padres win one game, they're at 92 wins. The Diamondbacks can't catch them anyway. So they're going to try to win that first game. But even further, if the Padres won that first game and then lost the next two and the Mets swept the Brewers, there is a world here where the Mets could actually have home field in play when it comes to that doubleheader. So we've thought so much about making the playoffs, and obviously that is the primary thing here. But if the Padres only win one, and that would mean the Diamondbacks win two, the Diamondbacks would be sitting at 90 wins. The Mets swept the Brewers. They'd be at 90 wins, so the Mets would clinch. The Braves, assuming they won uh, at least two games to get themselves to 88 wins, they would still be in play to pass the Diamondbacks up, so a doubleheader would have to be played. Now, the Mets could win game one of that doubleheader, and Braves are out. Mets are in, Braves are out, Diamondbacks are in. But seeding would still be up for grabs, and so it would be a weird situation where I think the Mets would tell the Braves, let's play game two, and the Braves got to play a game that doesn't matter for them other than trying to spoil something for the Mets, where the Mets could actually sort of turn this whole thing around, where if they ran the table, won the final five games, Padres only win one this weekend. All of a sudden, the Mets would be the four seed. They would fly from Atlanta to New York, and now, last minute, the Padres would have to go from San Diego, fly cross-country to face the Mets in the wild card series. 
and the Mets are all of a sudden hosting a playoff round. It's one last scenario that I never got to yesterday. It didn't broach my mind, but that is still something that the Padres have to play for. So yes, on some level, you would think that that series between the Padres and Diamondbacks will still be taken seriously. Also because the Padres will probably want to knock off the Diamondbacks anyway. But you can't count on that. The Diamondbacks are playing at home with their back against the wall. There's every chance that they will sweep that series. There's every chance that the Atlanta Braves, whenever they get to start their series against the Royals, who won't have anywhere near as much to play for, there's every chance that the Braves are going to sweep their series this weekend. So if you're the New York Mets right now preparing yourself for Friday night and the rest of the weekend, it's pretty simple what has to happen. Win every game. That's got to be the mindset from here on out. And you know what? If you do that, like I said, you never know. You might just find yourself atop this thing when it's all said and done. What I want to talk about next, though, is previewing this series, Mets versus Brewers. How will they handle their pitching? I'm going to go through that in just a minute. First, though, a quick word from our sponsors. With Robinhood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robinhood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for the high society. Now, the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privilege of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. That new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply for specific disclosures. Visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. Stay up to date with all the latest in the world of sports when you check out Locked On Sports Today, streaming 24-7 on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube today, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Our goal is to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season, so I appreciate all of you who continue to subscribe. All right, so let's talk about this series, Mets vs. Brewers. Again, the Brewers have nothing to play for. That does not mean that they're just going to roll over. The guys that are in the game, they're going to try to win it. Okay, you have a lot of young guys on that team. Jackson Churio, he's probably not going to win the rookie of the year, likely to finish third. He's going to play these games. You think he's going to take it easy because he knows he's playing in the playoffs? You, know, you might get fortunate where William Contreras might not catch in this series or might only catch the first game. Maybe they want to save his legs a little bit, have him DH. He's still probably going to get at bats and play. They don't want him to just go cold into the wild card round. And same thing with the rest of their guys. So as much as you could say, oh, the Brewers got nothing to play for, they still got something. And especially when you think about, for one, the fact that these teams got a little bit heated at the start of the season. There was the whole Reese Hoskins, Jeff McNeil situation. So there's a little bit of, I don't know how much that bad blood will carry over. It was literally the beginning of the season. Now you're ending the season against each other. But it's something. It's not nothing. And the last thing you want to do if you're the Brewers is take the Mets lightly. They get an edge on you. They beat you or they sweep you in this series. And then they stay in town. Well, actually, they won't stay in town. Uh, most likely, they won't stay in town. We got it today yesterday. We're not going to do that whole math again. But there's a world where the doubleheader does not matter. And the Mets and the Braves just elect to roll into a wild card round if the Braves are eliminated and the Mets don't care about the seeding side of it. Whatever. There's a chance that happens. The Mets could stay in town and build up that momentum, or they could have a detour in Atlanta, come right on back. You don't want to give them that some mental edge over you. So the Brewers are not going to take this series completely lightly. Where you'll see it is they're not going to put Freddie Peralta in these games, right? So you're going to get a starting pitcher or a bullpen game that you can maybe feast on a little bit. That's how you have to win scoring runs early. The Brewers still have a great bullpen, though. If it is a straight bullpen game, knowing that they'll have Monday to rest their pen, if that is on Saturday or Sunday, you can lose in a bullpen game. So the Mets need to get great starting pitching, and they have to hit. First game, it's Shaman I versus Frankie Montas. And Montas has a 4.85 ERA in this season, 4.56 since getting traded from the Reds to Milwaukee. Shaman I is your ace. Every single game is must-win down the stretch, but this one in particular, 
you got to make sure that you win the last Mania start of the regular season. The Mets have been very good in those instances. I believe on the top of my head, they've won their last eight games when Sean Mania is on the hill and 15 of the last 17. So this is a huge one. Tough to go from two days off and all the drama to now gear right back up again, especially when the last game you guys played was a tough loss against the Braves. But I think this team is going to be itching to go, and hopefully they can jump out early on Frankie Montas. It is a pitching matchup they should be able to exploit, especially with Manaya on the hill. I hope to have an easier victory to sort of lead into the weekend because then things start to change. Okay, wow, you won. The Diamondbacks lost. Well, now your magic number over Arizona is two. That starts to change things a little bit. Not for Saturday, but potentially for Sunday. Again, we'll see if the Braves even play on Friday. Saturday, game two of the series. David Peterson is my guest to start that game. That would allow him to pitch game three of the wild card round. If they were going to go to Peterson, um, you know, instead of Quintana in the Braves series, I think they would still go back to the well on that. You win that game, Diamondbacks lose, you're in. You're in. Let's say maybe the Braves lose a couple games up to that point. Like you're sitting in a pretty spot. The only question for me when it comes to the pitching matchups for the Mets this weekend, I do think there would be a hope that maybe you could hold Severino out. And that would make the case that either way, unless the Mets are just on the verge of elimination or, well, they wouldn't be on the verge of elimination. Jeez. We'll leave that in the show. Um, They'll, they'll, as I talked about in yesterday's show, for those of you who missed it, the Mets cannot get eliminated this weekend. If they lost all the games, the Braves won all their games, it would not matter. Doubleheader would still have to be played. The Mets would just have to win both legs of that doubleheader. So they're going to make it to Monday one way or the other. Now, if they had won the first two games and the Diamondbacks had lost one of the two or both of them, whatever it is, there's a world where the Mets would decide to go to Jose Quintana for that game three. Anybody who pitches after Saturday will not be available to go in the wild card round on regular rest. Someone could pitch on Sunday, come back for game three on short rest, but regular rest, that's out of the question. So there might be a little bit of a desire to hold out on pitching Luis Severino. Now, there's another wrinkle to this too. The Brewers this year have fared much better against right-handed pitching than left-handed pitching. So the Mets can go with their three lefties in this series. If they sweep the series, they could clinch on Sunday. Then they would go into that doubleheader against the Braves, and there might be some incentive to play it if the, you know, the, the home field advantage is still up for grabs, right? If that's in play, yeah, maybe you still pitch Tyler or McGill and, and try to win a game. Um, I don't know how much the Mets would value that at that stage. They certainly would not value it enough to pitch Luis Severino. So in my eyes, it might make sense to hold Seve out of this series altogether just because of the Brewer struggles against left-handed pitching. It's not struggles. I shouldn't say that. They're middle of the pack against lefties this year. They're a top five offense against righties, but they're a top five offense against righties. So it's something to consider at least to some extent. Once you get beyond that, if you need these games against the Braves to get in, then you know you may be going back to Severino in that doubleheader. Although he hasn't fared that well against the Braves either. So it, it's really tough to figure all this out. The one thing I would say with a lot of confidence going into this series, I think you're going to see Sean and I and David Peterson in the first two games. And then Sunday is sort of up in the air. Um, because again, there's a world where you get yourself to a point where you can hope that you're going to get in. Either you get in or you could get in with the first victory in a doubleheader where you could sort of have Seve ready to go if you need him. But if not, you save him, and now you got him pitching in game one of a wild card round. It's a lot of craziness. I do want to mention this. The Braves have made the decision not to pitch Chris Sale on Friday, which is really interesting. Now, this could be multifaceted in one respect. Chris Sale's velocity was down his last start. So maybe this is something to do with that. But it seems more like they are holding Sale out for the Mets doubleheader potentially or the wild card, depending on what they need. 
it was sort of reported that they're holding sale for an elimination game. What does that mean? Well, if they pitch Max Fried on Friday, he'll be good to go for game two of the wild card round. Now, let's say Friday's rained out. If they pitch Freed in one of those games in the doubleheader, he'd still be good to go for game three of the wild card round. Now, you could say, why not pitch Chris Sale in that spot? From the Braves' perspective, I think, they're probably looking at the Royals, figuring the math, and saying, you know, we can beat the Royals in a bullpen game, or we can beat the Royals calling you know, on Grant Holmes, whoever it is. I think they want to make sure that they have their best foot forward because they're looking at their season and they're thinking most likely they're going to have to clinch against the Mets. Spencer Schwellenbach will be able to pitch in that wild card round or that, excuse me, in that double header. It could be Schwellenbach sale. And if that's the case, if the Mets get to the point where they have to win one game to make it and they got to go back into Atlanta to play a double header and they have to face Spencer Schwellenbach and Chris Sale, Mets fans are not going to feel great about those prospects. But you know what? You want to beat the Braves. You don't want to just back into the playoffs. So here is where we stand. The final segment, I will give you my impassioned plea why you got to believe in the New York Mets, and why I still think this team is destined to play some games in October. We're going to go through all of that in just a minute. First, though, Another quick word from our sponsors. This episode of Locked On Mets is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking.yeah. With the playoffs upon us, if you want to follow the Mets on their journey, if they're fortunate enough to get there, why don't you use Booking.com because it's time you explore those U.S. cities. We always secretly want to learn more about. We're talking about your rival cities with hotels, bed and breakfasts, vacation rentals, resorts, so much more on Booking.com. You might just find your perfect stay even in your baseball rival city. Or if you just want to enjoy the offseason somewhere else, make sure you use Booking.com as the right state can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rivals. Book today on Booking.com on the site or in the Booking.com app. Today's episode is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app. With over 5 million active members, Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports, unlike other apps on Prize Picks. It's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections. You watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends. Become part of the Prize Picks community today. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. So you could turn $10 into $1,000. Prize Picks is the best way to win real money this football season. Which players are going off, which aren't. Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app today. Use the code Locked On MLB. You're going to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. That's code Locked On MLB on Prize Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollars bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks. Run your game. If you're an everyday listener of the show, make sure you become a Locked On Mets insider. This is our texting service where you get updates from me anytime news breaks in the Mets. You can ask me questions anytime. You can take part in our Locked On Mets sign photo giveaways. Any of the line graphics sent to your phone each day so you know it's in the starting lineup without ever having to go on social media. If you want to be a Locked On Mets insider, find the link in the episode description. Go to subtext.com slash Locked On Mets. All right, so five games left to play for the New York Mets. And they're in it. Okay, let's not lose sight of the fact that last year, if the New York Mets had a series rained out, I mean, maybe they had to play for someone else's benefit, but they were so far out of the mix, this would not even be a possibility. There would be no angst. There would be no anxiety. There would be no worry. There'd be no stress. And you'd say, oh, well, maybe I like that. Maybe I missed that. Maybe that's more carefree, but that's not why you sign up to be a Mets fan. You sign up for this. You sign up for these moments. And yes, Throughout the history of this franchise, this team has broken our hearts more than they have lifted us up. But you know what? What does that do to you as a Mets fan? Makes you tougher as a person. (laughs) Okay. It makes you have a better sense of humor, I think. But also, it makes the wins that much sweeter. And not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but I think there might be a world 
and I hope that this is the case, where this franchise does not produce as much heartbreak, where this franchise under Steve Cohen and David Stearns, two strong heads atop this organization with now a really good manager, I think, in Carlos Mendoza, I believe that the Dodgers, what we've seen them do over the past 12 years, tonight they clinched their 11th division title in 12 years. Sounds crazy, but I think that could happen for the Mets. I hope if I'm fortunate enough to be a father someday, my kids might grow up with a Mets team that wins a lot. I know a couple weeks ago we talked about uh, how one of the Locked On Mets insiders, they just had a son named Ezra. I remember it was when the Mets won all those games in a row not that long ago. I think they had won like the first eight games of Ezra's life. Hopefully Ezra does not have the trauma that the current Mets fans have dealt with, that we've all gone through. And the reason why I set all that up is to say this, if the Mets make it this year, it might taste sweeter than any of the other playoff berths that could soon come. You know? If the Mets get to a point where they have won a division 10 times in 11 years or whatever it is, five years in a row, them making the playoffs, the goalpost is going to move. You're only going to get that great satisfaction if you win a World Series. If you're a Dodgers fan, it's great that they clinch tonight. But you're in a position where the only way where it's a successful season is if they're holding a trophy at the end of it all. And the Dodgers are a perfect example of how hard that really is. 11 division titles this year, they'll have another shot at it, but only one World Series in the COVID season. That's a lot of empty banners up there for division titles. I don't know if they do that, but still. So the reason I say all of it, I've watched all these different champagne showers around Major League Baseball, and I've been picturing what it would be like to see our guys in that type of a situation, to see Pete Alonso acting a fool, spraying champagne all over the place, Brandon Nemo with that big old smile on his face, Francisco Lindor after carrying this team as an MVP this season. Yes, he won't win the award, but it's still an MVP caliber season. Getting to see him bask in that moment, finally. See Carlos Mendoza, a rookie manager, get to give a speech that fires people up. I got goosebumps thinking about it. This is what you want as a fan, to watch games that matter. And yes, is there a chance that it ends up going to a doubleheader and it's Schwellenbach and Sale and the Braves break our hearts one more time? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that could happen. That's in the cards. And that's a scary, daunting thought as a fan. Of course, you don't want to go through that again. But I'd rather go through that than not be in the race. And if the Mets clinch before then and get that moment, that's going to be amazing. Even better in some ways, if they do it against the Braves, if they stick it to Atlanta and they went through all of this drama of all of the travel and everything else, they never played a neutral site, they made it hard on everybody, and the Braves are eliminated at the 11th hour and they're not a playoff team this year, that's going to be awesome. That's going to be an amazing moment. And if there's a team to believe in, it's the 2024 New York Mets. Since that meeting, that fateful meeting, that gave us four awesome months of baseball. Let's appreciate that for a minute too. Four months of getting to watch this team win series after series after series after series getting to be happy more days than not in a baseball season and get entertained night after night with different guys stepping up heroics across the board. This is a Mets team that has been resilient. This is a Mets team that has shown fight. And what they need from fans, even though it might not actually impact, you say fans can't control the game. And for the most part, I believe in that. But I also think there is something to be said about energy. And if there is anything that curses the New York Mets, it might just be the angst of this fan base. It might just be that mindset that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So try as you're watching these games. And trust me, if the Mets, if Shamanaya gives up runs early and the Mets are losing, like, it's so easy to default back into that pessimistic mindset. And I get it. I'm not blaming anyone that does it. But try to enjoy this run for whatever it is. We had 48 hours to be pissed off at it. 
Now the road's in front of us. This is what you have to look forward to as a Mets fan. If they get to the wild card round and they're exhausted, it is what it is. But that means that they got that champagne shower. And that means that they still have a shot to continue to shock the world. So let's see what this team can do. They have earned our eyeballs for the rest of this season. They have earned us to be bought in. They have earned our trust as a fan base to pull for them, to believe in them, and to think that they can actually pull it off. So hopefully we got some happy podcasts left this year. But you know, one way or the other, I will be with you every step of the way. I'm actually moving right now. And I have changed with the moving company like a million times over. First, there's a whole paint situation. I won't even get into that. The apartment got painted right before we got in. So we couldn't move because of the smells. Regardless, I think I have to move that date back one more time. So I'm here all the way through the regular season. I was going to move on Monday. I was hoping off day between wild card round and the, uh, or excuse me, end of the season, the wild card round. Now I think I'm moving it back one more time to Tuesday because Monday has a good chance of mattering. But I cannot wait to see how this story unfolds. And I will be doing shows after every game. You know, I don't think I'm going to do one live after the first couple games until the Mets are potentially in position to clinch. If they do clinch, I'll do a live show after I watch the celebration and we'll have a follow-up celebration. So we'll see how it all goes. Make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel and hit that bell with the notification. So if I do go live, you'll see it. You'll know about it. If you're listening on the audio side, make sure you follow where you get your podcast, check that feed each day as I'm going to keep doing shows throughout the rest of this season, every single day. And uh, we'll see where the chips fall as we get through it all. Thank you all who have tuned in throughout this awesome season. I appreciate you sincerely. Uh, make sure you follow me wherever you get your podcast. I said that. Uh, follow on social media, F. Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show at Lockdown Mets. Thank you for making Lockdown Mets. Your first listener, your first watch every day. Now for your second watch, head over to YouTube. Check out the first ever 24-7 streaming channel covering everything in the world of sports. We're talking about Locked On Sports today with our local hosts from each team, league-wide hosts from each league. Find Locked On Sports today streaming 24-7 on YouTube.